All right. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Dan. I, uh, like Rob, I'm uh, at Rutgers University. Uh, I'm an evolutionary biologist by trade. And I'm going to very briefly uh, just take a few minutes to talk about what vaccines are, how they work, and kind of what the point is with all of this. So uh, because this is what I do, I made slides. So let me just share PowerPoint real fast. And if anybody spots any technical problems, if you can't see anything, if it's not working, just let me know. Uh, what you should see is a slide that says, how do vaccines work with a graph? There's gonna be some stuff that's going to appear on this graph. Uh, vertically, we're gonna be looking at how strong your response is to uh, the vaccine. And uh, from left to right, we're just looking at days, right? So what we wanna do with vaccines is trigger something called a primary immune response. This is what your body does the first time it encounters something that it's never seen before, something that could potentially harm you. Now, the reason you get sick the first time you get exposed to like some new virus or something is that a primary immune response takes a long time to ramp up. It takes like a week or two, and it's not actually that strong a response, and it dissipates after another week or two. So it ramps up, but then it goes away. But the important thing is once you do that the first time, once you are exposed to that same thing, you trigger what's called a secondary immune response. Now, a secondary immune response is really fast, it's really strong, and it lasts a long time. You're talking weeks to months before it fully dissipates. So this means if you get a vaccine that basically teaches your immune system, hey, here's a thing that you might have to deal with in the future, and your immune system learns how to deal with that. When you actually see the virus for real, when you're actually exposed to the real thing that can make you sick, your virus, your, your immune system can ramp up really fast and prevent it from actually being able to cause an illness. So that's what we're trying to do with vaccination. We want to teach your body how to deal with the virus before you're exposed to it. So when you do see it, you can actually respond really quickly and effectively, and it won't get you sick. Now, there are a lot of different ways you can do this. We've been doing vaccinations for over 200 years, uh, but they all are based on presenting something to your body that resembles like the virus that can make you sick, but can actually make you sick. So some of the older ways of doing this are use a weakened virus. This is called an attenuated vaccine. So this is a virus that it's not going to make you sick, but it can still get into your body and get into your cells and your immune system can basically practice on it before it has to deal with the real thing. You can also use just a dead virus. That's an inactivated vaccine. So it's the whole virus, but it's dead. It can't do anything, but your immune system still recognizes it and goes, aha, that thing's a virus. Let's, let's get ready to deal with that. Then we have some, some kind of newer ways of doing it. Somewhat newer is called a subunit vaccine, where instead of getting the whole virus into your system, you just take the part that your immune system recognizes. And you've probably all heard the phrase spike protein uh, uh, related to, to the coronavirus and COVID. That's the part that our immune system detects. So like for a subunit vaccine, you might take uh, some spike protein and inject that and your body can go, aha, virus, even though it's just the spike protein, your body still sees it as a virus and it learns how to deal with it. But the vaccines that we're using to, to uh, prevent COVID are actually some newer types. So one type is called a viral vector vaccine. It's really cool. What it does is uses a different virus as a kind of a delivery mechanism to get the directions into your cells to make the spike proteins. The directions are delivered in the form of a molecule called DNA. That's like all your genes are stored in DNA. And your cells can see this DNA and make the spike proteins and then practice on them. And then, uh, so that's the J&J &J and the AstraZeneca vaccines. But the ones that everybody is really getting right now are called mRNA vaccines. These are both uh, Pfizer and Moderna. This delivers into your cells a molecule called mRNA. And again, it's just the directions to make the spike protein. So you get the vaccine, your cells get the blueprints, you make a bunch of spike protein to practice on, and then your immune system is prepared if and when you are exposed to the real thing. And I just want to say, just as someone who like studies viruses, these mRNA vaccines, these are so cool. This, this is like really great technology. The idea here is that you get more of the spike protein because you make it yourself rather than having to just deliver a dose of it. That makes the response to the vaccine much greater. 
So that brings us to the question of how effective are these vaccines? What we know for Moderna and Pfizer is that we see a approximately 90 to 95% reduction in the risk of infection. Now there's a lot of confusion over what this actually means. What this means is that you are 95% less likely to get COVID versus being unvaccinated, right? So it's a 95% reduction in risk. This does not mean that 5% of vaccinated people get COVID. And this does not mean that you have 5% chance of getting COVID once you are vaccinated. It's a 95% reduction in risk. And that's risk of infection. We also see benefits in terms of reducing the risk of transmission if you are vaccinated and get infected. It's rare, but it happens. When that's the case, we see a reduction in transmission. We also see uh, a close to complete elimination of serious illness and death once you're vaccinated. So they are very effective at reducing infection and they're even more effective at reducing severe illness and death. And again, there's a lot of confusion about what these efficacy numbers mean. So I'm gonna illustrate this with a couple of uh, kind of hypothetical examples. These numbers that I'm presenting are not real. These are just numbers to illustrate the idea. So let's start with a high risk situation. You're, you're visiting indoors with someone who turns out to be COVID positive, no masks, no social distancing. Let's say in a situation like that, the risk without the vaccine is one out of two, meaning 50% of the time in that situation, you're gonna get COVID. Well, the reduction from the vaccine is 1 20th of the original risk. So we can put those two numbers together, one out of two, reduced to 1 20th gets you a new risk once you're vaccinated of one out of 40. So that's a significant reduction in risk, even in that high risk situation. But let's consider a lower risk situation, something that many of us are doing once a week, right? We're going to the supermarket. Well, in the supermarket, everybody's wearing a mask, everybody's keeping your distance. So that's gonna be a much lower risk situation. So let's say, and again, this is a made up number. I don't know what the actual risk is. This is just to illustrate the point. Let's say your risk in that situation is one out of a hundred. Well, again, we're reducing the risk to 1 20th of the original. So vaccinated, the risk in that lower risk situation becomes just one out of 2000. So it's much, much, much less likely there uh, to, to actually contract COVID in that situation. So that's just two illustrations of the efficacy here. The last thing, and I swear I'm done here, is that uh, what's the overall goal here? The big picture is something that uh, the mayor mentioned right at the top. The point is herd immunity. This is when enough of the population is vaccinated that the virus can't spread, that if someone has the virus, the people they encounter are not susceptible to it, so it actually doesn't spread through the general population. This accomplishes two things. It obviously prevents community spread, and it also prevents uh, or protects the unvaccinated. So you're always going to have people in a population that are too young or they're immunocompromised that can't get vaccinated. Well, herd immunity, by preventing the virus from spreading, protects those people. What herd immunity means in practical terms is that's when we're going to be mostly back to normal. And I'm going to very briefly illustrate this just to give you an idea of how herd immunity works. So in this example, if uh, an individual is yellow, they're susceptible. If they're red, they're infected. And if they're blue, they've been vaccinated. So they are now uh, not as susceptible to this virus. So in a case where you have half the population vaccinated here, you have someone that's infected. Well, that virus, they're going to encounter people that are susceptible, and that virus can still propagate through the population. But if you have 80% of people vaccinated and you're exceeding the herd immunity threshold, now, well, you can encounter people, that infected person can encounter people, can go around and cough on them, but the likelihood of being able to spread it is very low. So it's likely that that virus is not going to be able to propagate through that population. That's the goal where we wanna to get to so that everybody is protected, vaccinated, or like this person, not. So to summarize this very brief look at vaccines, the point of vaccines is to prepare your immune system to fight a virus or something else that can make you sick without actually making you sick. Uh, these COVID vaccines are mRNA vaccines that give your cells the directions to make the spike proteins for the coronavirus so your, your immune system can learn how to deal with that. They reduce the risk of infection by 90 to 95%. And the ultimate goal here, here is herd immunity to prevent community spread and protect everybody, whether they are vaccinated or not. Thank you.